Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan from Stockroom Supply. I got an email from Jim uh, saying, how do you adjust for blade drift on the Little Ripper? It's a very good question, very big answer to that question. Um, short answer is there is no such thing as blade drift on the Little Ripper. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, a lot of guys think right off the bat when they buy a bandsaw blade, that blade comes inherently with drift. That's not actually the case. When you think about it, the vast majority of guys, when they're cutting on a bandsaw, they're using a fence. Something looks like this right here. Maybe not with a resaw pin. More often than not, without a resaw pin, I'm going to take that off so it's a better representation. Okay. So we got our fence. When I'm cutting a piece of wood like this, this is a little piece of oak here, and I want to cut maybe a quarter inch, or I want to cut that piece of oak in half. I'm going to use my fence just like this. And I'm going to cut it like that. Now, I'm going to put this in the little ripper, and I want you guys to watch something. Now, one thing I will note about this video I'm making right now, it's going to be a little bit controversial, because I'm going to be talking about some things that I consider, that most would consider common knowledge, but I consider a total farce. Um, now, I am going to do this video without any editing, just so you guys can see, I'm not doing any smoke and mirrors, no nothing, I'm not do, making this bandsaw do anything it shouldn't by faking something. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this piece of oak. I'm going to cut a slice off the outside just to true it up, then I'm going to cut a little veneer for you. Okay. The bass has a little underpowered, so sometimes I gotta give her a couple of tries. something. This is a pretty thin piece of wood, but you see how that wood is opened up here a little bit. Every piece of wood is going to do that to some extent, some more than others, but that's a very important thing. That's a very important piece to the drift problem. You guys saw how that wood opened up there, how it stressed. When that wood stresses when I'm using a fence, you can imagine what's going to happen. It's going to push itself into the fence. Now that piece of wood is not going to push the fence away. Imagine more on like a half inch slice or a three quarter inch slice. It's not going to push the fence away. It's going to push itself away from the fence. When it pushes itself away from the fence, it's going to put side pressure on that bandsaw blade. Okay, it's called binding the blade. When you bind the blade on a table saw, you get kickback. That's why table saws, on the, behind the blade here, they have a splitter. A bandsaw, there is no splitter. A bandsaw, when I bind the blade, I don't get kickback. I do something totally different. I bend it. That's a problem. The way a bandsaw blade is designed, on the front of the teeth, they're bent out. You have kerf on the front. When I put pressure on one side of the blade, when I bind the blade on this side, I make this side of the blade less sharp. That blade, it's going to cut better to the sharp edge. It's going to cut better away from the fence. Now, if you pay any attention, you'll notice every single time when you're cutting with a fence and your blade begins to drift, it never cuts into the fence. It always cuts away from the fence because you're making that side duller. Okay. 
That's the issue with the fence. Now, here's the other thing that people will say. Basically, what I just said is the exact opposite of what every magazine will say. I just said, as long as I put pressure on the front of the teeth, as long as I don't bind the blade. It doesn't matter what saw I'm using, what guys I have, what blade I have, what tension on the blade I have, how I have it set on the wheels. The only thing that matters is I don't bind the blade. Okay, so I'm going to do some things that are very bad. I'm not telling you guys to do them, but I want to show you some stuff. First things first, I want you to look at these guides here. I've got them set up properly about a business card away from the blade. I'm going to take these right off. Okay, so now I have no guides. Okay, the other thing I'll notice, I have fairly low tension right now, just to make it a little bit more interesting. I got my tension knob up here. I'm going to lower the tension on my blade. Now, again, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just proving a point here. Now you're going to see, or you're going to hear, you hear that little thunk? Now I have low tension. Okay. The other thing that guys get very excited about is where do I position the blade on my top wheel here? You see I got it in the appropriate spot. A lot of guys will tell you to put the body of the blade in the middle. A lot of guys will tell you to put the gullet of the teeth in the middle. Everybody has a different story, but everybody agrees with this. I agree with this. On band says that that wheel is crowned where it's a little round on top. If I change the position of that blade on that wheel, because it's crowned, I actually change the angle of my blade. Okay. Here's what they say though. If I change the angle of my blade, I change the angle of my cut. That's not the case on a bandsaw though. A bandsaw, you got to remember, the blade is twice as wide on the front, approximately, than the back. Table saw, same width on the front and the back. If I'm not perfectly parallel or very close to parallel with my table saw blade, I'm going to hit the back, I'm going to burn, I'm going to get kicked back. On a bandsaw blade, I got a little bit of wiggle room. So it really doesn't make a difference. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn this big old knob in the back, and then I want you to see where I put that blade. There would be absolutely no one that would recommend you put your blade right there. I'm hanging right over the back of the wheel there. Okay. Now, when I demonstrate that woodworking show and do this, when I turn the saw on, everybody backs away because they're afraid something's going to blow up, but just watch what happens. Um, this is pretty interesting. So as a review, I've got no guides on the top here. i got low tension. I've got a 3 8 blade. Not normally a blade most guys would use to resaw. Watch how I cut. Just watch what happens here. Okay, let me make a little, little slice off the outside here. You can see that blade vibrating in there. I'm cutting every bit as straight as before. The other thing I want you to notice, when I stop, very quiet. I could leave that there for 10 minutes. I'm not going to have a burn mark on the inside of my cut. There's no side pressure here at all. Straight up and down, right on the front of the teeth. guys be pretty happy with that. Now where I stop, right about there, you can almost see where that blade was vibrating in there, but there's absolutely no burn mark, because there was no side pressure here at all. So long story short, 
the reason that little ripper is not drifting, the way you set it up for drift is you don't gotta do diddly squat. When you first set this thing up, you gotta line it up to your miter gauge. Nothing saying that miter gauge is anywhere close to parallel with that blade, but it's close enough. It doesn't make a difference to saw, the guides, the blade, the tension, the setup. The only thing that matters is that you don't bind that blade. Now I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but tell me how I'm wrong. If you have any other questions, send me an email. I love answering them. Thank you.